Well, this is Father Adam, and I would like to reflect with you about where, during the sacred triduum, we find the powerful people, the people that supposedly had the influence and control, like the Roman soldiers. Where do they find themselves at? Well, they find themselves plotting the crucifixion because they've already had the crucifixion lined up for the next day. And so they're getting their nails ready. They're getting the hammers ready. They're also getting their wine ready because, you know, the crucifixion takes place over a very long period of time. And so they need to keep themselves entertained. And so they're even getting their wine ready. And what about Caiaphas, the high priest? Well, he's plotting the arrest and the trial of Jesus. And he's getting the people riled up in order to get Jesus convicted and crucified to get rid of him. And what about Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor at the time? Well, he's behind his closed wall because, you know, the powerful people, they have to protect themselves behind the wall. They're afraid. They're behind a wall hiding. And I have a question for you. What about God? The all-powerful God, the God of the universe. Where is God? God is as we found out during the Holy Thursday liturgy, is on his feet, washing smelly feet. The God of the universe, the all-powerful God, is on the floor getting down so that we can go up. God gets down so that we can go up through his example. God gets down on the floor, on his knees, washing feet. Smelly feet, callous feet, feet filled with fungus. You know, they were fishermen's feet. They were probably sweaty, smelly feet. And he gets down there to wash these tired feet, these deformed feet, these feet full of this disease and sickness. He touched those feet and he comforted them and he kissed them and he clutched them to his breast as he washed them because the Creator is teaching us that the Creator serves the creature, the Master serves the student. That's how he shows his love. That's how God shows us his love. That's how he shows us that he gets down and dirty into the dirt of our lives. God gets down on the floor, on his knees, getting down and dirty in all that is dirty in our lives and in all that is messy and disordered, in all that needs to be washed. He gets down and he washes it in all that needs to be cleaned in our judgmentalism, in our sinfulness, in our bad attitudes, in our lack of hope, in our fears, in our worries, in our, in our lack of patience. He gets down and he washes it, the dirty parts of our life, the dirty parts of our human existence, our addictions, our depression, our sense of superiority. He washes it. He grabs those smelly feet so that we may know that He's got us grabbed by the feet. <clears throat> he grabs the feet, clutching them to let us know that he's got us by the feet and that he won't ever let go. You are never alone. In other words, when you find yourself on the floor of life because God gets down there on the floor to be with you in your suffering, in your life that is full of problems, when you are thinking that there is no way out. God gets down on the floor with us to comfort us and to say to us, look, even though you are down there all the way to the floor, I am with you. I have you grabbed by the feet. And so no matter how smelly those feet of yours may be, I've got them and I won't ever let go. Now, during this week, we are celebrating that God got down all the way to the tomb. 
not just there with our feet on the floor, but God gets down into the tomb. Isn't that what Good Friday is? That God went to the tomb, not just the floor, but the tomb. The tomb of our problems, of our suffering, all that puts us there, you know, your abuse that you've suffered, the fact that you've been betrayed, the sickness that you've had to go through, the disease, the betrayal in your marriage, the fact that your husband cheated on you or divorced you or your wife did you wrong or that you've been dumped, you know, your depression, your suicidal thoughts, all that darkness in our life of the tomb. God gets into the tombs of our life there with us to be with us, to assure us that when we are even in the tomb, not just on the floor. First, he shows us on Holy Thursday that it's the floor. He's there on the floor. But today he's showing us that he's in the tomb with us as well. That we are not alone in our issues. Especially now with this coronavirus pandemic, when you can't pay your bills, when you have to put up with your husband 24-7, or your kids, and particularly if you have people in your life that insult you and put you down, and now you've got them 24-7, it puts you in the tomb, doesn't it? Jesus is saying, I'm there with you. When you're suffering, I'm suffering by your side. When you're on the floor, I'm there clutching you by the feet, comforting you, caressing you, kissing you, holding you close to my breasts by your feet. And when you're in the tomb, I'm in the tomb with you. In the injustice that you have suffered, in the broken heart that you have sustained, in whatever you're going through, I'm there with you. Jesus is there and he's telling you right now through this sacred triduum, and we are experiencing the tomb this year like never before. We are experiencing being down on the floor, on the ground, like we've never experienced as a people, as a nation, maybe during our lifetimes before. And Jesus is saying, look, I am. And you hear that in John's passion all the time. I am, he says, I am here. You are not alone. All will be well. You will be well. By your feet, I've got you. By your feet, I've got you. Now, you know, it's easy, as this time indicates, for us to look for God in beautiful cathedrals and churches, you know, it's, or in sacraments or going to Mass. That's easy, you know? That's very easy. There's a reason why the church on Holy Thursday doesn't give us the account of the institution of the Eucharist, but gives us the washing of the feet from John's gospel. And John doesn't have the institution that the other three gospels have. And we read the washing of the feet because it's easy for us to come and to focus on the presence of God in the Eucharist. But what about the presence of God in the washing of the feet. It's hard to see God in the dirty part of our life and the dark part of our life and the gloomy part of our life when you're on the floor when you, or when you're in the tomb. For that, you need faith. Not religion, you need faith. For that, you need spirituality to be in touch with your spirit not religion, not beliefs, faith to recognize God with me on the floor and to recognize God with me in the tomb and to praise him, not just in the blessed sacrament or at mass or during prayer. Anyone can do that, but to praise him when I'm on the floor, when things are going bad 
or when I'm in the tomb, to praise him during a coronavirus pandemic. That's faith. When things are going bad, when I'm in the ditches, to recognize the presence of God in my broken family, in all these bills that keep piling up, in the midst of my addiction or my depression or my suicidal thoughts or in all that I've sustained because we walk by faith and not by sight, says the Bible. Now, the world doesn't want us to recognize God in washing feet, especially smelly feet. The world doesn't want a God in the tomb, in a dark tomb, but our God is present with us in the dark parts of our life, in the messy parts of our life. He's with us. He's sustaining us. And he's leading us out of the tomb and out of the darkness and up from the floor to the glory of the risen new life of the resurrection. That's what we await. Because the tomb is not forever. The floor is not forever. They're only temporary stops. As the cross was a stop on the journey to the beautiful, new and glorious life that God has prepared for those who love him. And I love you and I bless you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.